Good morning, guys. My name is Man on Manny, and my class presentation is on Nansen and its impact on the state of Alzheimer's disease. You guys might be familiar with this study as we talked about it earlier in the semester. Um, so please enjoy. Uh, so what is the non study? So the non study is a longitudinal project, um, comprised of 678 Catholic sisters from the school, from the school sisters of Notre Dame. Research is led by David Snowden, um, from the University of Kentucky. So he brought this study to this, to these sisters and they agreed to share the medical records and agreed to donate their brains after death for further study, which is very rare in studies like this as, um, there's, Usually not a follow up or participants do not agree to these terms, to, to these terms, which is very unique for this study. And also was particularly good with this study or perfect with this study was that, um, the particular similarity with which they all had le led their lives. None of them smoked, none excessively drank, none had partners and each lived a fairly routine, meaningful, meaningful life. So those are basically variables you could basically just take out of the equation that does not affect the study in a sense. So methods used in the research. So eight tests were used to assess the memory, concentra concentration, language, uh, visual spatial ability, and orientation to time and place. And also a mini, a mini mental state examination was also used on the on the on the participants and also informal interviews were used periodically throughout the study to access to assess the 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 cognitive function of the, of the participants throughout the study so the key results from the study so um several nuns had all the physical signs of alzheimer's disease in the sense that um after after they donated their brains to the to, to the university they compared their brains to that of a normal brain and they had the um the characteristics of alzheimer's disease on their brain to the brain sh on, uh, shrinkage and uh, a buildup of uh, uh neurotic plaques in the neural cortex hippocampus and um and also diffuse plaques in the neural cortex and hippocampus and also in a decrease in brain weight, which is also only observed in uh, system system Mary's um, um, brain, but uh, compared to the mean, she, hers was far lower than the average of the other sisters in the study. So, in system Mary's brain, it contained an abundant neurofibril tangles and sinoplaques the classic neuropathological lesions of Alzheimer's disease. Although extra, when the results were extrapolated and compared to the other sisters, um, sorry, so when they were, so when it was, um, the results were extrapolated and compared to the sisters, they all have kind of a similar kind of brain in terms of at their death, but it's very difficult to compare these brains because they all lived, um, you, they all lived the same kind of life. There was not, nothing different about any of them. So to compare between those brains is very hard to do for the researchers. And also how they all aged the same way in a sense. Um, they had the same Alzheimer's disease kind of brain, um, the clinical manifestations of Alzheimer's disease. Well, no, the, the physical, manifestations for Alzheimer's disease in the brain but not the clinical manifestations of the disease and also they had a greater idea density which was less likely to get disease in terms of they taught they taught kids they read every day um, they communicated with each other they had a, a great sense of there was really no um, way they could hate each other in that sense in the convent or anything um, so it didn't really there was no stress in the brain that could lead to which is, a, which is a risk factor that could lead to the disease. And um, so they lived such a great life that they didn't really possess any of the risk factors that you could say could be linked to Alzheimer's disease. But it's still at the brain at the end, which is something we're going to get to later on. Okay, so um, sorry, okay, let's stick back on this. Um, and during the study, um, what the researchers found was that yes, physical damage to the brain can speed up cognitive impairment in terms of stroke, um, um, indulging in risk factors, having a horrible, uh, uh, a, a horrible diet, 
um, the environment you live in, in terms of hygiene and everything else, this could all affect affect the brain. But also, they said um, um, the researchers found out that people who read, wrote, and intellectually stimulated themselves throughout their early twenties have a better chance of starving of dementia later on in life. And also speculate that it was mental reasoning developed in the nun's early 20s which helped reduce the total effect of brain shrinkage in old age. Um, in addition to all of this, Snowden, came, Snowden stated that um, although these results are good, they're not 100% um, they're not they're not one hundred percent proven. So more longitudinal studies need to be done for this to be proven and replicated. With the longitudinal studies, hard to replicate a longitudinal study. A study has been going on for twenty years. It's very hard to replicate that kind of study because you need the same kind of participants with the same kind of um um brain chemistry and everything. So it's very hard to replicate this kind of result. So the conclusions you draw from the study have to be used in terms of the physicality of the brain, what compared to a healthy brain. And then going from there. So the non-study brought up, um, answered a lot of questions. Also brought up a lot about the unknown about Alzheimer's disease, and that there's no true cause of the disease's own. In, there's no true cause of the disease except that uh, indulging in all the possible risk factors for disease, like um, dieting, uh, well, poor, poor hygiene, poor dieting. Um, not living a healthy lifestyle can lead to an increase in cognitive impairment for people that uh, can lead an increase in cognitive impairment for people that get a disease. So you, you get a disease early on in life than most people who don't indulge in those risk factors. So further research. Um, so further research needs to be done on the on, in, the significance of association between neurotic and diffuse plaques, which make up the synaptics in the brain, that lead to Alzheimer's disease. All these all these nuns had these plaques, but it did not have the clinical manifestations of Alzheimer's disease. They had the physical manifestations, but not the clinical manifestations of Alzheimer's. They, didn't, they did not display the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in any way. Some students went so far as to say that um, Sister Mary was cogn cognitively inclined till death. She was not as bossy, which is a symptom of normal aging. She loses energy more, but she could still remember things. She could still participate in activities. She could still remember where she is and do other things and also teach as well. So she was a hundred years of age or so. She did not lose her, she did not lose her, cogn her cognitive functioning as she aged, but it did slow a little bit though. So importance of the non-study and understanding normal aging. My mild cognitive impairment on Alzheimer's disease. Um, so the importance of the study it shows us the gradual progression of from normal aging to severe Alzheimer's disease, and also we can see this in the lives of the nuns. They lived such a essentially almost a perfect life. Um, they avoided the risk factors as much as, much as they could, and they slowly progressed towards a decrease in cognitive uh, cognitive functioning, but did not get. Alzheimer's disease. They had the brain for it, but did not get Alzheimer's disease. So further research needs to be done in done in association about is does the buildup in plaques um, um, associate itself with Alzheimer's disease, or th does it associate itself with just normal aging, or is there is it is it an increase in the plaques in the brain that cause um, Alzheimer's disease or a decrease in it? That's where the that's where the research needs to come in. It's important to the topic in relation to our class. This topic is very important in that it helps us understand um, the progression of the disease from beginning to the end, or the the difference between having the effects. Um, I mean, indulging the risk factors and not indulging the risk factors. This um, this is this study is a good comparison between between that in terms of comparing yourself to nuns that did not indulge in the risk factors as much as they could, but it still had the f the physical manifestations of Alzheimer's disease, but it still did not have the physical symptoms. So it kind of puts into puts into perspective that we need to um, um, avoid those risk factors as much as possible during our lifetime to reduce the chances of ever getting the disease. So the summary, in summary, um, summing everything up, AD is probably not a disease that is simply present or absent. Um, it can, this is very evident when we look at a nurse's brains in that 
the disease was present in a sense in concerns of the composition of the brain at, at death, but it did not have the clinical manifestations. And also more longitudinal studies need to be done to gather accurate data on past exposures to potential risk factors, more willing participants that would donate brains for research. This is this is not very popular because of the stigma related to Alzheimer's disease. So with when the stigma is reduced a little bit more, research can be done. But with the increase in stigma towards Alzheimer's disease and not enough knowledge passed around about the disease, this is going to be very hard to accomplish. Um, this is the end of my presentation. I thank you for listening. Have a good day and good luck on your finals. Thank you.